Welcome, everyone, back to an episode of our podcast. And for this podcast, we have a special guest, which is actually one of the first of my guests, which is a great change of pace. Um, we have Monica. Hey. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Hi. 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 How are you? I'm doing pretty great. How about yourself? Good. Pretty good. So, Monica, before we begin, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. My name is Monica McFadden, and I live in Trout Lake, tiny little town. Um, I'm not the only photographer, surprisingly, even though there's only like 500 people here. And I'm the one waitress in town, and (laughs) that's pretty much it. I've got two dogs and a cat that I really love, and here I am. (laughs) What kind of dogs? Well, you can see them if you want. This little uh, German Shepherd mix. So sweet. And then there's this this creature. (laughs) She's like a a husky sight hound, I'm sure, because she's got the longest legs I've ever seen. And then I've got this little critter right here. Oh, my God, stop. (laughs) He is so cute. He's just bumming on the couch. (laughs) He's so cute. He's like, he's like full sprawl on the couch. Mm-hmm. Wait, <laughs> yeah, so he's pretty laid out. There real? There's only like 500 people in your town. Oh, uh, give or take. I guess it's getting bigger. There's a lot of people I'll bump into that I've never seen before, but it's pretty small. Got Is a that good like group of... weird to like pretty much know everybody? Yeah, it's really weird to have like dated two of the only people my age in town and that that's pretty much it like there's probably 10 people our age mm-hmm. wow yeah <laughs> you can kind of make things messy i guess that's crazy but i don't think i really would want to be anywhere else because it's the most beautiful place in the world yeah but you didn't grow up in a small town right no i grew up in i guess colorado springs and east county san diego um my dad was a Marine for 30 years, so, and we got lucky. We didn't move around, like, every three years. We moved around, like, eight to ten. Um, and I went to college out in Colorado Springs at UCCS and got a degree that I have yet to use, which is so cool. Story of, like, everybody's life that goes to school. Mm-hmm. They get a degree, really... degree they never use. <laughs> yep. I'm in college, and I'm, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have taken a little bit of a break to what I really wanted to do, but I just started taking classes and ended up with a degree in communication with an emphasis in organizational and strategic planning, which is not me. I always like thought I was very logical and very to the point, but in the last couple of years, I've figured out I'm a lot more creative than I gave myself credit for. So that was probably not the degree for me, but oh well, never too late, I guess. I mean, but I think as far as like getting your degree, I think I'm sure like you don't necessarily regret your decision because there's like a lot of experiences to be had in going to college and stuff, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, I didn't do any of like the college life or anything like that. It was very much like I'm going to go to my classes and I'm going to go home and do like an internship in between here and there, whatever. And I had a really fun minor in sustainable development. And then that's where I met my husband. I'm not married anymore, but that was, it was a pretty fun college experience, I guess, to screw up and get married early. (laughs) 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 Yeah, it's made a difference now. I'm a little bit more cautious, I like to think. Yeah. A little bit you live more and you learn, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that okay. was certainly not a bad time in my life. It was a lot of fun. It was just not where I wanted to be. Right. I wanted to be up here, so I got here. <laughs> Wait, four so years ago. So if you're from Colorado, how did you end up in Trout Lake? Because Trout Lake is like, from my understanding, when I met Kevin. Because Kim and I grew up in a town with, like, thousands and thousands of people. And people know, like, our hometown. How does someone from Colorado Springs, which is pretty pretty big, I've been there before, end yeah, up in Trout like Lake? Yeah, it's like tiny Portlands now. Like, I went back a couple of months ago, and that Colorado Springs has really taken off in the last couple of years since mm-hmm. I've been gone. 
but I had always wanted to live in Washington because my dad's family is from up Coyoam off I-90. Mm-hmm. And so I spent my winters and my summers here just a couple hours north on the other side of Mount Adams. And that's where I attribute all my growing up to. So I only wanted to get back to Washington. So I started looking for, uh, oh, and I hated my office job. So I started looking for jobs uh, that were the complete opposite side of the spectrum from the office job is over at the Forest Service. Um, And they do, they have like vets work stuff that does a lot of trails maintenance. And I had originally applied to do trails up in Clay Elm. And they said, uh, oh, it looks like you'd be really good with kids. Why don't you come do the summer camps? So I did a whole summer of taking kids up on the mountain, teaching them sustainability stuff and art. And it was the best summer of my life. Like I love kids and just seeing them kind of grasp a concept scientifically because of the art that we're doing is an incredible feeling. Like I just fell in love with this place and fell in love with the people too. So uh, at the end of the summer, when I was all done with that summer camp, I drove down to Colorado to get all my stuff and to, you know, like officially leave my situation down there. And I went and picked up the cat and the dog. And then I picked up a new dog, which was Peter. And I just drove up here with a U-Haul and decided I was staying. And I lived in the Subaru for probably like two weeks until I figured something out. But this town is so wonderful to where if you're, you know, nice with people, they will help you out. So everything that I've come across in Trout Lake is because someone else has been there like, hey, this sounds like it might be good for you. And it always has been. (laughs) Trout Lake is definitely one of those towns that if you're from Washington, you would know because it's a big like summer hotspot. But outside of Mm -hmm. Washington, you try to explain it and people are like, what? (laughs) I don't grasp the concept. (laughs) I, when I travel, I try to not tell people where I'm from because I don't want it to get destroyed. So I usually just say I'm from Hood River. But I've come across people that know where Trout Lake is. I just met a man a couple weeks ago that lived in Goldendale half half his life and now he's down in Arizona. So it's, it's like it's a tiny town, but it makes a big impact, or at least this area does on a lot of people. Okay, so before we go any further, Kim is going to ask you some ice-breaking questions. So, you ready? Okay. Yeah, they're very um, intellectual questions. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Let me upload these really quickly before we get on to the next section. It takes forever for them to export. And then about a hundred years for them to go up into the album. So I do that and then I'll send you guys the link. Nice. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. You ready? Ready. Yep. Okay, Kim. First question. In the mm-hmm. spirit of the Super Bowl being today, the day that we're recording this podcast, if you could come up with a new sport, what would it be called and what would the rules and parameters be around that sport? Holy God! <laughs> wow, Kim, that's a very yeah. in detail that's question. A... Hey, man. Now, I know hide and seek is already a thing, <laughs> but it would have to kind of be out in the woods here, where I know it best. <laughs> and then it would be kind of like a, I suppose, like a month or two long survival thing out there where you just stay hidden as long as you possibly can. You know, there's no rules. It's just you stay alive, but it's like a long game of hide and seek. (laughs) (laughs) Like Survivor, I guess. Hey, I love Survivor. Yeah. (laughs) We used to watch that all the time as a kid. Oh, my God. Are you a fan of the challenge shows? The what? Like, are you a fan of those, like, challenge shows? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're just talking about the regular old Survivor, we used to watch that all the time as a kid. And then Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, at my old boyfriend's house, we got snowed in for a week. So we just watched Mm -hmm. season after season after season of Survivor. And it was so fun and nostalgic. (laughs) But I guess my, my game would be a little bit like that. But you'd just be hiding from, like, a group of five people. 
all of you and you try never to come across each other again. <laughs> I guess my ultimate joy is solid food. <laughs> Hey, that works. Yeah, that works. I feel like, though, for that game, you you got to pick people not from Trout Lake because Trout Lake natives are very good at surviving. <laughs> yeah, so, so pick... like me? Yeah, so pick someone like Kim to play this game. I'd be awful at that game. <laughs> Second question. Do you have any weird food combinations that's, like, your personal, like, recipe that you make it's kind of gross but it's also kind of good okay this is not one that i make but it does not sound like it goes together okay. so my favorite sandwich shop down in white Sam is feast and for the entire four years that i've been here i've been eating the turkey pesto well just last year come to find out turkey pesto like a pesto mayo goes really great with peanut sauce it sounds really gross, but can't eat the sandwich without the peanut sauce now. You should try it sometime, though. It's delicious. Turkey. So turkey with both pesto and peanut sauce. Yes. Mm. And maybe it's just that the peanut sauce overpowers everything else, and I would drink peanut sauce if I could. But <laughs> I don't know. It's a good, good mix. Give it a go next time you're in town. I think... That sounds pretty good. Kim, I, th I yeah. think, if I remember correctly, you have a weird food combo that I always make I fun of you for. Well, huh? well, I have a few. Okay. But, like, what are you thinking about? I'm thinking <laughs> about... What is it? Does it want to out herself? <laughs> yeah, I have a couple. I've, I've gained a few in my secret gross food recipe book. You oh, have my a goodness. Whole book? I'm blanking. One has to deal with spaghetti, right? Or like... I might, though. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I want to hear the spaghetti one because that yeah. was my favorite food for the longest time because it's um, all like... I could afford to make. <laughs> it's not spaghetti, but it's so I'll take like pasta noodles and then it's basically like pasta noodles mixed with like spicy mayo. So it's like <laughs> spicy noodles. <laughs> or mom thinks this is gross, but it's like my grilled cheese with mayo and pickles which That's i think not is gross good. and then my um mashed potatoes with italian dressing i mean if you don't have gravy next i hope it's not italian dressing over gravy no it's no. italian dressing by itself okay because like mashed potatoes have no flavor and the italian dressing is literally like all like, yeah it's just like a bland Nothing. Yeah. Without it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pretty good ones too. Yeah. Growing up, I did something similar, and I don't know if Kim. I don't really do it anymore, because we don't really eat mashed potatoes. But I used to put ketchup on mashed potatoes. So nasty. Oh yeah, I used to do. I used to put ketchup on absolutely everything. <laughs> yeah, that was like, the go-to. Um, yeah, I still put it on my eggs. <laughs> yeah. Same. Still eat eggs with ketchup. But sometimes the smell of ketchup is too overwhelming for me. There, I mean, yeah, there are times I'm like, wow, that's a lot of ketchup. Are you going to eat all of that? I knew somebody who and ate... I'm surprised every time. <laughs> yeah, I knew somebody who ate pizza and dipped it in ketchup. Oh, you know what's really good? Pizza and honey. Mm -hmm. That sounds a little strange too, but is that not an East Coast thing? I no. <laughs> no no okay well my cousins <laughs> might be whack then because I I'm dipping my pizza in ranch and my little right. cousin Jacob pulls out some honey I'm like are you out of your mind he's like you don't believe me but it's delicious and it really is and I do it every time now well I don't have ranch honey savory thing yeah I guess so it's just for <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me just whip out this batch of honey I have in the back of my pocket with this pizza. You know what? I sometimes I carry a little honey, uh, one of those pouches in my, not in my pocket, but in the car. <laughs> you know what? It might be more of like a Southern East Coast thing because up by us, we're strict like Italian, like pizza, pizza. Oh sometimes yeah, a little bit a of ranch. a purist with the pizza. Yeah. Someone totally. sometimes dip in a ranch, but it might be more of like 
Virginia below and below because their pizza can be whack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And one thing I just can't stand for is pineapple on a pizza. I don't care. <laughs> I've never had pineapple on pizza. Okay, so... I, have you, do you? I have. I, ha- I have had pineapple on pizza. Hello, back again. <laughs> and I will say... That's like one of the biggest debates when it comes to pizza. If you put pineapple on your pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say it's damn near 50-50 split. Yeah, yeah, it is for sure. Because I have had pineapple on pizza and I think it tastes good. No! <laughs> <laughs> but do you have it with the ham? Yeah. Okay. I've never had it. Because then it's like a Hawaiian style pizza. You know, the ham, the pineapple. Yeah. And the big, um, not debate, but the big, big thing people say to justify pineapple on pizza is like, well, tomatoes are fruit and you put it on a pizza, so why not put pineapple on pizza? I mean, I think cucumbers are a fruit too, right? I don't know. (laughs) We don't know anymore. There's too much, like, knowledge bouncing around so we don't know <laughs> just need to make up a new category for all the i want the real news about the tomato not the fake news <laughs> yeah <laughs> like tomatoes and cucumbers they're fruits but they need a new name technically because they don't taste like fruit well i because... think they've got a special name they probably well, do it's the whole thing of like if they're if they have seeds and they're fruits but like i feel like every fruit and vegetable for most part has seeds not every, but like most of them. Avocado. I gotta add this to the list. Are they fruit? I don't know. <laughs> Avocados are just avocado. They're the healthy fat. Yeah, they're the, I don't, yeah, they're not really considered like a vegetable, I guess, either, right? No, I don't think so. They're something. Avocados are something. To be determined. <laughs> to be determined. Okay, I just sent you guys the link for this. And you can check out the pictures. I really awesome. like. I just love the time I get to spend with the black and white ones. Like, that's the best part, I think. <laughs> Probably take a look at them um, after this, because I know Kevin wants sure. to see them. Are they your pictures, Steve? Yeah. <gasps> oh, exciting! <laughs> okay, you're transported back into time. Is there a place or time period you wish you could capture through photography? Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, mine totally went away and it also froze. I did not hear the question. (laughs) Okay, okay. You're transported back into time. Is there a place or time period you wish you could capture through photography? I think it would have been really cool to take pictures of the Old West. Like, I know there's pictures of people standing still and stuff but i think it would have been cool to get action shots and i think it would have been cool to live in that time too i think it would have been a pretty good cowgirl <laughs> yeah well a little looser on the laws might be a little bit more fun <laughs> well i think a lot of women because i know from firsthand from kevin a lot of women in trout lake remind me of cowgirls anyways Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like modern yeah. cow- cowgirls. That's the shoot I did the other day was uh, taking pictures of my friend Bane on her horse. And that is the hardest working cowgirl I know. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Plus, like you said, for the West, they had cameras because cameras were developed in what the mid 1800s, but not like our cameras. Mm-hmm. So it would have been interesting like action shots of like duels or something Mm-hmm. yeah we would just uh spend some time in tombstone and that was like i had gone there as a kid because my family was living in arizona but it was just a real good time and it would have been fun to take pictures of just to kind of take more i guess detail shots of little things that were happening right that, cool. that weren't staged for a photo. <laughs> cool. Okay. Last one. The best type of potato. <laughs> huh. I'm asking everybody this question, D, okay? <laughs> I know. I just forgot that you were going to do it. Yes. So many ways. 
so many different kinds of potatoes. Exactly. Yeah. Little round potatoes. Mm -hmm. Have them up and fry them in a pan. Get them all nice and toasty. Best way. So like home fries? Mm-hmm. But just like the little, little tiny potatoes. Cut them in halves or quarters and fry them up like a little potato nugget. <laughs> I like that. God. That's pretty good. I like that answer. Yeah, yeah it's... I got a pretty good seasoning mix that goes on there. I have really surprised myself this last year with my mm, cooking. Wouldn't call it skill, but enthusiasm for it. <laughs> <laughs> Was the cooking amped up because of everything that's going on and having to stay home more? Oh, yeah. I mean, most of my meals I'll eat over at the inn just because I'm working anyway, which is like the best food in the world. How can that compare? But I also have been enjoying cooking for one this last year. It's been such a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing to make? I really love to make, I make this uh, goat cheese stuffed chicken. And you uh, put cilantro and chives in there. And I could just eat a whole thing of goat cheese by itself. So, so damn delicious. But I made, I don't know if you heard my answer. No, you have to repeat it. You just, oh, okay. Goat cheese stuffed chicken. Yeah, it's goat cheese stuffed chicken. And it, you have cilantro and chives in there. And uh, I made it a couple of weeks ago when we were camping. So I made it in a cast iron skillet. And it came out really good. I was pretty pleased. Anything made in the cast iron is bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like anything. It was fun to figure out how to do that conversion because I normally just bake them, but just figuring out how to do that in there was fun. Yep. You need uh, a, what I've realized for cooking, the best utensil to have when it comes to meat is definitely a thermometer. A thermometer oh, yeah, sure. is very helpful because, mm -hmm. you know, like. You get to a certain temperature, and then they advise to take it off and let it rest because it'll cook in the juices and stuff. That thermometer yeah. has made all the difference. Take it a few degrees off before it's done. It cooks in its juices, and it's so much better than just taking it off and, like, it being dry and nasty and, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I like to do the meat right. Like, I don't want to let it sit around and get all gross. Did you guys get enough snow to cancel school? Is that what you said? Yeah, she says, <laughs> Kim's uh -huh. waiting. So Kim, she's a babysitter slash nanny pretty much. So she's waiting oh, yeah. to see if she doesn't have to work tomorrow. Isn't that the best? <laughs> yeah, because it snowed um, last literally like a week ago, Sunday into Monday, and I didn't have to uh, babysit. And I was like, ugh. Oh. So nice. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> no. So I think that might happen because it's like, the snow's crazy. Okay. So, rapid fire questions are over. One mm -hmm. question. So now we one question we like to fire. ask is, um, so how have you been with like the current state of the world and everything that happened the past year? Sorry, I'm not sure why that keeps happening. It's probably me because we have uh, Elon Musk's space internet, but it's not worth a damn. <laughs> Okay. It is fun to go like Elon every time. Uh... <laughs> every time it uh, acts funny, like yeah. dang it, man! You'd think with all that space litter, they would have it failed by now, but they don't. You'd think so, but, but anyway. no. <laughs> okay. Um. So I don't know if you heard, but I asked with the past year and everything that was going on, like. What did you do? Like, how'd you deal with it? How's, like, your physical and mental health? Things just like that. Um, when it first all kicked off, it was, like, two weeks before my birthday. And I was going to go visit my parents. Um, they had just moved out to Spokane. And we have been apart for the longest time. So I was going to go out there for my birthday. And then everything got shut down. And I got too nervous to go. So I had, like, had myself a little bit of a mental breakdown those first few weeks as we all did yeah but um i'm better i started this last year was super busy for photos so i just did a lot of that um i live right on the creek so it was nice to just during the summertime get out and lounge about out there 
it's really not a better place to relax than Trout Lake. So, um, but I think just keeping busy with photos has kind of got me through this last year, especially with the in kind of being more volatile because we're getting shut down because of to go stuff or indoor dining's up and then it's down and whatever. So that's been a little bit more outside rather than just falling asleep on this couch and then depressed. Oh, I was just saying, you know, that's been a little bit more volatile because indoor dining has gone up and down. And uh, there's only so many people in this town that will eat to go again and again and again. Um, so that's been kind of tricky. So it's been nice to have photography to focus on goals and getting out of the house and stuff. Do you think some kind of a purpose? Right. Do you think it's kind of odd or was odd that so many people were requesting like pictures and stuff because of everything that was going on um no i don't think so we've been pretty lucky to kind of remain in a little bit of a bubble so i mean those first couple of months were tricky because nobody wanted to see anybody like because we don't know what's going on but um i think as we all kind of settled in it just kind of for the most part, turned back into regular life up here. I mean, you still wear your mask and everything, but everybody is going out to the taco truck and to the store, and so it just kind of seemed normal. And I had a lot of big pushes this year to kind of branch out with, like, what I was doing for photography. So I did back-to-school photos, I did some maternity stuff. I did a wedding, um, <laughs> some couples photos, and then I did a bunch of work with the Comet this last summer. Um, and a lot of people came out to have their picture taken with that, so that was pretty cool. And I think it was just this year I had nothing else really to focus on outside of, like, there's regular life and going to work, but then I needed something that was really making me happy, and that's this is what makes me the happiest is taking pictures. And so that I've been reluctant to charge for it for a long time because I was worried that attaching money to my joy would ruin it, but it's been okay. I feel like, I feel like a lot of people feel that way when they like attach a charge to something they're passionate about because they don't want like the greed or any feelings that comes with money be attached to what they mm -hmm. love and their passion just yeah. starts to decline like after that you know um but you were you were saying before how you didn't know like you had this creative mindset or whatever and you were going to go down this totally different path when was like that aha moment that you knew you wanted to do photography um well i have had this camera for Seven years. That's an old guy. Um, and I just started out taking pictures of wherever we were going because we're, you know, a big camping family, big exploration, whatever. And so I would take pictures of landscapes because that, that's easier than people because they don't fidget and stuff. Um, <laughs> and I think after, you know, I never had considered ever taking pictures of people because I just was like, those people are way too talented. Like, I'm just going to stick with mountains and rivers and see how that goes. But I think once I got here, um, but I think once I moved here and started to know the community, and this is like the most supportive community that I've ever been in, uh, once I got comfortable here, I was like, well, why not give it a try and do some practice sessions for people around town and stuff. And I had a lot of families from White Salmon come up because I was a nanny down there my first few years. And I just kind of got into the groove of taking pictures of people, and I was really enjoying it. So, um, you know, now my big birthday ask is always some kind of lens or something. So this last year, or maybe it was the year before, I switched over to a really nice portrait lens. And that's just kind of taken off from there. Do you have any, like, the first couple of years you were starting – out in photography on my own. what was the first couple of years like you know starting the whole photography business and like branching out and trying to get people to actually like you know hire you for to do their photos 
because part of it is mm-hmm. like marketing mindset, right? Yeah, part of it is marketing mindset, which is um, in that big title of a major, it comes down to marketing and PR and advertising, which is what I did in my office job. So I have like um, underneath my, the title of my major is all marketing and PR and advertising work. And that's what my office job was for and my internship and stuff. So I know how to do all that stuff, but it doesn't really bring me any joy at all. Um, So I think the first year that I started doing portraits for people, I just, the problem was me being in my own way. I'm a huge procrastinator, unfortunately. So it was just kind of setting up systems that would work for me outside of an office setting, like for me as an independent person to kind of get the wheels moving. Um, And I just never made a website. (laughs) Still seems like a lot of work and Facebook is going all right so far. So I'll just stick with that for a little bit. Yeah, you don't really need a website. I mean, I've checked out your page. Yeah, you really don't anymore. (laughs) Yeah, you don't. (laughs) They give you you like all the tools to succeed. Yeah, and most of the time when I look something up now, I'll look it up on Facebook and not go to their website, or I'll just go to their Facebook page because I know that's more current than a website it is. So anyway, but that, that first year was definitely about just figuring out how to get myself going and how to actually follow through with things, which was always a huge problem for me. I'm a big project starter and not a big project finisher, but... I'm getting better about that, so. I'm the same way. She yeah. is. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I mean, I have a an embroidery hoop up there that is just, it's like seven months behind. We'll forget about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> growing up with then, Kim, growing up with yeah. Kim, she's the same way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of I us had to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Side note, we have like, cause I'll, I'll cut this out while we wait for her. We have like four followers on her Instagram already. And we have like posted you, anything. It's just yeah. you, me, and Lauren. Um, do you have any like memorable experiences from like the first time or like the first couple of years of when you started? Uh, photography with like people or in like certain destinations or stuff like that Mm, well I think the first big event that I did was for the White Salmon Valley Education Fund I think that's got a lot of letters for the acronym there W-S-B-E-F yeah Um, and I did like a fundraising event for them and took photos for that and that was um, boy, it, I wish I had done a better job on the photos for sure, but it was the first time kind of getting out there and uh, I guess just kind of holding my own, even though I didn't feel like it. The imposter syndrome is way up high with me, but um, that was a pretty big one for me because it was the first like paid gig that I had. Um, I've been asked to do a couple of weddings, but with COVID, they just those got rescheduled and fell through um let's see oh the god one of my (laughs) favorite photography stories is how I was all geared up to take pictures of this birth you know this time last year all ready to take pictures of this birth been excited for weeks and weeks and weeks and at 1.15 or something around there, the grandma texts me and says she's going into labor. Now from Trout Lake to Hood River is about 45 minutes. I said, I'm definitely going to make it. There's no way I'm going to miss it. I get from Trout Lake to BZ, which is about 15 minutes. I pop back into service and the grandma was like, she's here. I was like, oh, cool, cool, great. So I guess (laughs) that was... um, you know, not a big event. I got to photograph her after and everything, but it was kind of a a milestone in where I was like, I need to be a better planner. Like, holy shit, I can't believe I missed this. The birth only happens one time, and I had missed it. So since then, I've been trying to be a little bit more proactive in my planning and stuff. 
<laughs> were you like that was terrible were you supposed to like take pictures of like the process of like she's giving birth so like during those moments of the yes. labor yeah i was looking forward to just like really getting it like the first picture of that thing in the world <laughs> And uh, I missed it by, like, 30 minutes. I could not believe it. But she's so damn cute, I couldn't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Did you end up, like, still taking pictures for them on that day? Frozen again. Oh, there we go. Um, I said was, uh, did you still end up taking pictures for them on that day? Yeah, I took, it was nice to take a lot of detailed pictures of, like, her tiny features and everything. It was beautiful. And to get one of my best friends, you know, a picture of him after his kid has been born was just pretty special. So photography has given me an excuse is the wrong word, but just kind of a reason to be involved has been really nice. Like, I've got, I get to take a bunch of, um, you might have seen uh the style of picture going on towards the beginning of the pandemic it was the porch pictures when people weren't really leaving their house so you just take pictures on the porch um and i got to do a lot of those this year towards the beginning of the pandemic which was great kind of capturing what uh, different families lives were like for the first couple weeks of the pandemic so it's been nice to figure out a way to get myself more into the community by doing something that I love, which is couldn't ask for anything better to be a part of the community while doing something that I love. And I definitely, I mean, I love the end too, but photography is obviously where my passion would be. <laughs> um, so what do you think is some of the easiest things you've done for photography and some of the hardest things you've done that go into like, you know, you implement now in your photography now? Some of the easiest things that I've done, boy, it's Nothing. kind of nice that just <laughs> taking a taking a portrait kind of comes naturally now, which is fun. Um, when I suppose, are you asking me what I'd like to get more into, or sure, like what do you want to get better at? Oh, okay. Then there's a lot of stuff that I want to get better at. <laughs> um, I this last year with a comet, I got to take you know, pictures of that and pictures of the stars and pictures of the Northern Lights, which is like my one dream. It was amazing. I definitely cried that day. It was super. So I would love to get more into astrophotography, but I need a, it always comes down to what better gear you need. Like I need a star tracker and all this and that and stuff. Um, but I would like to get more into astrophotography. And then also light painting, so I guess more nighttime photos because I've kind of been restricted to natural light and daytime because uh, I don't have a flash or anything. I've just been kind of a natural light shooter for the last couple of years, so I'd love to get more equipment for long exposures and kind of, you know, light painting is where you would run through the shot with uh, some kind of flashlight or light beam and just kind of drawing through there and making full cool art behind that and you can really get that going for some good portraits too with different colors on people's faces and stuff so i'd love to get more into the creative point i feel like we've kind of plateaued a little bit it could always be more creative but i feel like i, I want to branch out into the colorful stuff and longer exposures and see what i can do is there anyone in the photography space that you look up to or you look for for inspiration for your photos like oh i want to do my photo like this person or take my photos like that person i always am looking like for like growing up that you saw that oh some growing up too well i wasn't really like into photography when i was growing up i guess i don't know that's kind of not true I am in not a lot of family photos because I was taking the pictures, but I... <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really have somebody that I looked up to as a kid for photos. I was just fascinated by uh, my mom's photo album. So those are more 
like people you know and you care about, but you can really see when they're exuding joy in the photo. And that's something I really loved was being able to feel what was on the other side of the picture because I knew those people. And I guess that kind of comes across now in that I don't like to take posed photos. My God, that's like my nightmare. I don't like telling people what to do. Uh, but I love just catching a laugh or making them, you know, happiness is the most beautiful expression to me anyway. So I like to make people laugh during that and try to capture that on the camera. And I think I've done a pretty good job with most of my folks this last year. I'd rather it be full of emotion and joy rather than just a staged photo, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like those, uh, like model photos or whatever, where they tell them to look a certain way or, you know, walk a certain way and have no emotion on their face whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I do have to be able to do that to like tell people how to carry their body and stuff sometimes, but that also, it kind of tightens the session up to where, you know, unless you're working with someone that's like well versed in that and like is comfortable being told how to pose, then it just it makes it very stiff and awkward. So I'd just rather be goofing around, having, having a good, a good time because those are going to be the best pictures anyway. Oh, especially with kids, like you cannot pose them at all because they have obviously got a mind of their own. So if you just get down on their level and have a good time you're going to get the best pictures out of them too. Don't really think that was a question that you asked me, but yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, you just went down a natural path. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I guess coming back to, you know, who doesn't look up to Ansel Adams and those natural or national parks photographs. It's like, it would be amazing to capture those kind of photographs, but now there's too many people in the national parks. <laughs> <laughs> ruining it for everyone yeah why can't it just be me <laughs> <laughs> why can't it just be me doing it <laughs> yeah if there was yeah. any one place you could go and take like pictures of right now where would it be like anywhere in the world if I could go anywhere in the world to take pictures I would go a few different places. I would go to where I could see the Northern Lights, probably like Iceland. I really want to go to Alaska. Cool. And then I would love nothing more than to go to Antarctica and take pictures of penguins. <laughs> and then another another thing that I'm trying to, you know, I haven't put forth any effort towards this because of coronavirus this year, but I want to get my red cards so that I can go out with the the fire crew and take pictures of them you know on their fire call it would be so cool that's like the the coolest thing that I can think of to do with my camera would be to take pictures of the wild and firefighters but hopefully this upcoming year I can do whatever act test I need to get done and stuff it's funny that you mentioned Iceland because I've I've been me and Kevin want to go, and then Kim also wants to go to Iceland. It's like mm -hmm. it's been on our radar for the past oh, couple of years. Of yeah, I want to go sit in those hot tub things <laughs> in oh, the yeah, hot like springs. That. Hot springs, that's what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. like a natural hot springs. But I mean, this is a side note. They also use it for medicine because of the minerals in mm. the hot springs, which is kind of interesting. Too. The Blue Lagoon. Mm hmm. Is there. Okay, speak. Is there anywhere else you would want to travel to, though? Like, outside of photography, where would you want to go? Well, I guess in my wildest, I was working that whole, I was being a pretty big sourpuss there, but I'd like to go back and actually have a good time. You have to say what you did because it cut out. Like, where did you want to go? Oh, oh. I was going to say, I'd like to go back to Italy and actually have a good time because I was working that whole time as a nanny. And I, I just would like to go back and be able to enjoy it on my own. Not that those kids aren't great, but I just it was a lot of focus on the kiddos. Wait a minute. So what you're telling me is that you actually worked in Italy for a certain amount of time? Yeah. 
<laughs> I was, it was just a couple of weeks. It was less than a month. Um, it was for a family that I had sat for in White Salmon, and they made the big move over there to do. Um, that's where you know Montessori schools. That's where the. God bless it. I can't remember the first name, but Lady Montessori, that gal, that's where she was from. So um, the mother went out there to do some courses out there, which is really cool. Um, and so I got to spend a couple of weeks out there with two school age kiddos and then a newborn. And it was, uh, we were in like, you know, cities just kind of don't do it for me. So we we're in a really big city far away from any tree or any grass even uh so while I had a great time with the kids and like exploring Italian culture for a little bit I wish I had been in a more mountainous area like to the northern part of Italy I would definitely go back there yeah I know how old were you this was uh just two years ago wow I'm envious yeah I'm envious too it's I feel like if you if you can work out enough, um, you know, time to yourself to where you get to explore a little bit more. I did have a couple of days of exploring, which were just phenomenal, but there's a lot more work than I anticipated. And maybe I'm just a lazy gal, but. (laughs) Did you try any good wine out there? Yeah. How was the food? I didn't do much drinking in, (laughs) Ah, oh, this is going to make me sound like such a curmudgeon. The food was okay. But at the time, I was dating a chef, chef that lives here. So I just, I was like, I just want to be home. There's good food there. The water tastes normal. <laughs> but I did, I did eat a lot of uh, gelato, which made me very happy. But I would love to go back and like explore for myself. Yeah, you need to definitely go back on like your own agenda and don't be don't be with someone who cooks because then you don't have to compare the food to anyone else's yeah yeah i was just i think i just had myself in a very negative headspace so i was not really enjoying things to the best of my ability but that's my own fault i mean hey you get to say that you lived in the country for a few weeks yeah round it up to a month no one needs to know i i do not take public transportation like in America at all, it's it's confusing. The trains, the buses, all the schedules, not for me. And I had to do that in Italy with three kids in tow Ooh. and did not speak the language. Oh my <laughs> I did it all successfully, but my God, it was stressful. <laughs> do you have any like funny memories from that time you were in Italy with the kids? Like just some oh, wacky stories? This, this was on my my day off and I had taken the day to go up to northern Italy to see uh, Lake Como which is where George Clooney lives but I did not see him <laughs> um, and I, I had spent the whole day out there just really crushing the pavement back and forth having a grand old time and then on the bus back or maybe it was, it was the train I had hopped off and got onto a connecting train and, you know, I'm pretty good with directions. Like, my internal compass is my internal compass is pretty good. And then when I'm on this train, I, I can tell it's starting to go the wrong way. And I'm like, oh, no, my phone's about to die. So it takes about 20 minutes for the train to stop, and I'm in a completely different part of Italy. And thank God <laughs> somebody spoke. English and to put me on the right train, but I would, had never been more panicked. I was like, I'm going to end up just lost because I hadn't bothered to learn any of the language, which again is my own fault. I, that you really have to prepare more for these things than I do. Did so, you find out later where you were? Yeah, I was like a couple of hours south of where I needed to be because it, like, my train was supposed to go this way and this train had gone down that way. And then I had to ride it all the way back and then all the way up. And I didn't, um, you know, whenever, when I got off that second train back to where I was supposed to be, it was like a time crunch of like two minutes for me to catch the very last bus to go back to my, our little apartment that we were all living in. 
and then I, I thought I was going to have to walk. So I was just, I hate being panicked, but it's my own fault every time. <laughs> it sounds like a movie. It felt a little bit like a movie, but I feel like uh, I have too ugly of a cry for it to be in, <laughs> on film. <laughs> they would have. Okay, Hello she's again. back. <laughs> Who? Okay. We've asked this before since we're talking about movies. If you could, if there was a movie based on your life, what would it be titled and who would play you? Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to do the most diva thing and be like, the great Julie Andrews, of course. <laughs> but I don't know who would play me. And it, it would probably just be called um, Late Again. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. Well, I, get... <laughs> I don't know who would play me. I've always struggled with that because I don't really look like anybody. I don't know. What would your movie be titled? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my. I have no idea. The thing is, okay, in my past, and Kim can attest to this, I've been late to things. And <laughs> our mother, she... <laughs> I miss things. <laughs> Our mother brings up this one story all the time on how I missed the bus that come home from college. You did so, it on purpose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did not do it on purpose. You did. <laughs> um, so that's probably one they would they would title at least my mom. Um, I don't know what I don't know what my movie would be titled because. I feel like um, there's different segments of my life that could account to just one movie. <laughs> Mine would be like, yes, I wear sweatpants every day. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's called, yes, I do. But then in parentheses, it says, wear sweatpants every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's funny. Yes, I do. <laughs> I remember um, Kim said because of everything that's been going on, she's like, I don't remember wearing like legit clothes for the longest time, mm-hmm. just due to be staying indoors and stuff. I've got a pair of like um, kind of like dad sweatpants, like they're like kind of like a '90s jogger kind of thing going on, and they're huge. They go like up to my shoulders if I want them to. They're just enormous. I don't know where they came from. But I wear them all the time. Number one comfy. <laughs> Sounds like an Urkel situation going on. You just need glasses. <laughs> and very sexy. <laughs> You're like, this is appealing. <laughs> walk, <laughs> walk out. Just one day, just walk out down like Main Street and Trout Lake in them and see what happens. You know, often I just wear, I've got a great big gigantic Seahawks onesie put up to like right here <laughs> walk down main street in that <laughs> what's that i said walk down main street in that then the seahawks onesie oh yeah that, that's where that story was going sometimes i do i just put my big coat on over the top of it and you can't hardly even tell hey, you should get a seahawks onesie <laughs> me yeah you we'll see um you, you it's seahawks. comfortable i bet I have a Seahawks jersey, um, but uh, this year for football has been kind of boring because there's no fans. Yeah. And who even are the Bucks and the Chiefs anyway? (laughs) Who are even these teams? Like, we don't care about them. Like, two teams that I don't normally care about anyway. Yeah. There's, like, a, there's a map going on the internet of dividing up like the U.S. into you know who's rooting for who, and Washington's under the umbrella that says we just want them both to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't care about them. <laughs> we just want both teams to have fun. Um, okay. Before we go like <laughs> down a rabbit hole again, I wanted to talk to you because this is a big thing. Is about your dads and dudes project. Oh yeah. That's been so fun. I wish I had a copy of it on hand to show you. (laughs) So just like explain the whole process. Excellent. Okay. Come on up here. Come on. 
We got a beggar here. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. She's going to make up her own mind. Okay. So a couple of months ago, probably like October, um, fella in town put up a picture on Facebook of um, the caption said it was supposed to be a maternity photo. But for one reason or another, the mom had to drop out. So the dad stepped in because they had already paid for it. So it's this very like maternity-esque kind of shoot for this man. Um, And a guy in town had posted that like, hey, Monica, when are we doing something like this? And then it just kind of snowballed from there. I was like, oh, I'll definitely do that. Sign a bunch of people up. If you want them, you got them. And then it just kind of, it turned into all these, you know, mostly wives and partners signing up their fellas for, for they're not even sure what yet. Something like this. So we put together the idea to just build a calendar out of it. And it took me, now this is a 2021 calendar. It took me until January fifth to get everybody shot for the calendar took a long time to get a lot of dudes together (laughs) and i have high hopes for the ladies calendar because i'm going to shoot that one as the months go by but anyway so i'm putting together this idea for this calendar got a bunch of people signed up and then and that's the best thing about this town is that you get all your ideas based on who you talk to I think some people were a little shocked about the butt on the cover, <laughs> but that's just the cutest butt you ever saw, so can't be mad too long. Um, and that's just about as bad as it gets as a little half a butt cheek. Everybody else is very covered up, and it was interesting to see, you know, the different men's takes on what they wanted to do for their month and their wives' ideas, too. We had a lot of woodcutters. Um, I just kind of went with more of what they do for work or what what they do around town how are they important to the community and stuff um i wish i had a little bit of it to preview to you but it was um it was cool to see everybody's different ideas and have that all play out over a two month two month span and have a long time to put it together um why don't you tell this <laughs> the story you told me about what was it october the november yes. shoot the October the band. Um Let me just pull that up on the computer. Do, do, do. There they all are. So uh, I get a message. Actually, I didn't even get a message about this one. I had heard around town that, um, oh, you know, so-and-so says they're, they're excited about the calendar. And I was like, well, I have no idea what about it. Play instruments, so kind of bluegrass. Oh, there it is. Let me just take you up here. Oh, that's my dirty ass house. (laughs) There they are. (laughs) And so. That's funny. So they are, uh, they're all dressed. And the one on the right goes, Well, Monica, do we have your permission? I'm like, Yeah, you know, it's cold. Like, let's get on out of here, ready to go. While I've got my little blue eyeballs on them, they all strip down to nothing. <laughs> and I just was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, well, you let you let me know when you're actually really ready. <laughs> and we, you know, we got it done really quick. But it's almost like it's almost like I wasn't even taking their picture. I was just, it was like I was detached right here. <laughs> like I just made sure I had them in frame. I was like, okay. I think we've got it. And boy, did we. That was, um, that's probably gotten the best feedback so far. Along with Mr. July, who is pulling off this really great uh, yak pants look. He's got a yak pelt around his waist. And that's pretty much it. He's got a cowboy hat on and a gun. And those two, uh, those two months are probably everybody's favorite so far. But it's, almost endearing to see like what these men of this community will do just because they they want to have a good laugh a and two or b because they care about their community so that was really nice (laughs) how uh 
how well is the calendar doing now? Because you published it already, right? So how well has it been yeah, doing? Yeah, we... It's... So, God bless Craig. While I was out on my trip, Galley and around, he picked up the mass of calendars and dropped them off at the store. So you can get them there now. And then the printer down in White Salmon was like, I'm going to sell them here out of the storefront, too. And this little tea shop next door is going to sell them as well. So... I haven't checked on those since I've been back just because I was waiting for a COVID test, but um, it's really cool to see it kind of expand and have other people not in this town, people that don't know any of these men at all, be like, holy crap, this is hilarious. Hmm. It is very funny. Those guys are so funny. <laughs> I remember when I saw the calendar, I was laughing because I was like, wow, like, it looked like almost everyone, if not everyone, was having a good time with the pictures and stuff. You know, being able yeah. to, like, put their own ideas on what they wanted to do for the pictures onto actual, like, paper or, you mm -hmm. know, be a part of the calendar and stuff, which was really cool to see. I enjoyed it when I saw it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that man, uh, the man with the chainsaw and the rose in his mouth is one of my favorites, too. He just came out of the house like that with a... a Sorry, we were talking about cats. <laughs> well, I want to talk about cats. <laughs> no, because I was saying my cat came up and he's on my desk right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <on>. yes. Let me get Quick, Mo. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Is that, um, low? Yeah. Loki Hamlet. Loki um, Hamlet. How old is he? Four? I think they're turning five this summer. Oh, yay! Yeah. And then I have another orange tabby. His brother is somewhere. His name's Otis. Oh, hello and Otis. <laughs> yeah. Good thing the cats are in there and not Mocha. We would not get this podcast done if Mocha was in, in there. Too. No, Mocha's in here. He's right oh, here. is he? <laughs> he's sleeping. Of course he is, because he's a, a lazy boy. I don't know how your dogs are, Monica, but, like, Mocha loves the snow. Oh, yeah. He's I've got one that, I mean, the little one, and she's not really little. She's, like, 45 pounds, but she's little compared to the other one. She hates to get her feet wet, like, will prance around the yard, not going to the bathroom because the ground's a little squishy. Yeah. But the other one, the German Shepherd mix, well, we've got a little bit of snow left from last week. She'll just pull herself on her belly and, like, army crawl through it and put her nose down and snuff all the snow. It is so joyful. Yeah, Mocha's like that, too. He hates mm -hmm. the heat. Like, he, like, refuses. And my other dog, Cookie, she loves the heat. They're, like, complete opposites. Oh. But Mocha, like, he's like, because my mom takes him out to go shovel and stuff, and he gets, like, mm -hmm. really excited. Like, he <laughs> loves it. He runs That's in so it. That's so cute. Does he chase after all the snow that she shovels? I don't know, but, like, if I go out in the backyard, like, he'll try to, like, play with me, and I'm just, like, falling because it's, like, so high. But, like, he definitely loves it. Mocha's a different type of dog, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was bred to look cute, and that was it. Like, not to be, like, super smart or, like, Super athletic. He was just bred to be cute. Which one's that? Mocha. Uh, I'll Mocha. Let me get a photo. Okay. Oh, oh, he is so cute. Sorry, I got distracted after like two seconds of looking away. Holy crap, that was cute. <laughs> so the Dads and Dudes project is doing better than you expected, I guess, by how you were describing it. Yeah, we've got a couple copies left at the store, um, and I was kind of just expecting, um, like, the, the fellows' families and stuff to buy them, um, just because, you know, it's, I don't know, but the most of the community has been pretty interested in it, and when I've showed calendar, like, I took my sample copy around and showed a couple friends and got and it was just 
Like the only thing I have cared about my whole life is making people laugh. And that was so perfect. Um, how's that? How's it then getting the ladies calendar together? Cause I remember when we were out shooting and stuff, you said it was kind of like a little difficult or more difficult than the guys. Do you think there's like a specific reason or that like women don't want to take pictures as much as men do or I think with the men's calendar it was a lot of you know some men volunteered themselves but it was a lot of uh, wives and partners getting them on board like you know I had one guy that really didn't want to do it even the day of the shoot but he whipped out some great photos and he was having a good time with it Um, and I think it just has to do with like how nervous you are like how much do you really want to do it on the opposite side of that with the women's calendar uh it's gonna be a hoot and holler in good time you don't have to be nervous and it also came from like there were a couple women that had signed on early and i think as other women had seen that like oh they're doing it that makes me a little bit more comfortable and i'll give it a shot too and a lot of the women are um doubled up or they're doing a group shot um something to make it a little more fun and i think a lot of what i had titled the the women's calendar was like fox like a sexy swimsuit calendar which is not the way that i want to go with it i just want each month to kind of you know because not everybody feels they're most beautiful in a sexy swimsuit so figure out what makes you feel the most beautiful and the most happy and we'll get a picture of that. So I think once I got that point across, then I got a lot more, like the calendar's totally full now, and I have to kind of condense, um, ask people to join up with each other just so I can make a little bit more space. But it did take a little bit of time for uh, the ladies in town to get comfortable with it, I think. But do you think, fun, so. do you think then, because you were talking about swimsuits, and stuff part of the reason why women weren't signing up because you know when we think of women's calendars a lot of people will automatically think okay it's women in like swimsuits or something it's not like women in their natural like what they consider themselves to be beautiful do you think that was like one of the main reasons why women initially didn't sign up for the photo shoot yeah i think so and i that's what i think too when i think of a women's calendar like the one I'm picturing right now is hanging up in a friend's house and it's this lady like crawling towards the camera all sexy, which is fine. If you're comfortable with doing that, let's do it. But I think that's certainly, you know, it, that, that doesn't make everybody comfortable. It doesn't, I'm not even comfortable doing that. I don't like to do that. So I think getting over the idea that that was what I had in mind um, that helps with getting more people signed on once I was like, yeah, it doesn't have to be like that. It would be better if it was more genuine anyway. So I think I was at the end. I think it was just, um, to put a different idea behind the calendar. It doesn't have to be like a sexy swimsuit maxim. To be successful. I just, I want it to be genuine to who each of these ladies are, who each of these friend groups are. Because that's who everybody in town knows them as. And that's what's going to sell the most, I guess. So have you already started, like, taking pictures of these women or not yet? Um, No, because I'm shooting them as the months go by. And honestly, I kind of, I shirked my scheduling responsibilities these last three weeks. Because I kind of, we'll get to that later. Um, (laughs) But I think I'm going to do January so I'll just wait till it snows and then shoot mine and then we'll shoot each of the months as they go by. So I've got a lot of time to get everything planned out, but all the months are full so far. I'm really excited. There's a lot of good ideas floating around. What's your, a sneak preview. What idea have you made for yourself for the photo shoot? Oh, for myself, for myself, I'm not sure. I kind of want to, because it's January is like, the darkest time mm, darkest month kind of I mean if you're not counting the solstice but I think I'll just do kind of snowy in a black cloak and figure out how to wrap that self around myself tastefully 
it'll be easy because I'll be shooting myself, which I could take all day to do as long as I don't freeze to death. Mm. Um, I just have to like, that's been really fun too, is self portraits. Cause I have to put something in where I'm going to stand, like stand something up so I can get the focus and then it'll run through 10 shots and I can kind of just, um, get comfortable with whatever throughout those 10 shots. Do you think it's going to be, uh, interesting or like awkward to maneuver a photo shoot where you're just doing it yourself? <laughs> Like you yourself. Yeah, do you it's been, ever feel weird about it? <laughs> I, I definitely feel more weird when someone else is taking my photo because, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people are like this, like, very self-conscious as I was growing up, so the only thing I resorted to was being funny. So if someone else is there taking pictures of me and trying to be serious and sexy, it's not going to go well because I'm just going to be goofing around. So it'll be easier I think to shoot my own and just kind of figure out what idea I want to go with but there's a lot of great ideas for all the other months too I'm excited about those (laughs) (laughs) okay Uh, hi win oh boy okay so to wrap up the podcast real quick go ahead and tell the viewers out there what you actually were doing for the past couple of weeks oh okay for the last couple of weeks so Every now and then I get a wild hair in my head and I have just, I'll take off. So I took off this with my partner who moved down to Arizona. So we spent a couple of weeks driving down there, which was amazing. And then during all of this, my mm, grandpa had died and my mom got diagnosed yeah. with stage three aggressive breast cancer and it's like in her lymph node and everything and I'm trying not to think of it as like oh shit all this stuff is happening it's so stressful whatever I'm just trying to think of it as like okay mom's gonna start chemo and it's like the most talkative cat ever (laughs) Um, but I've been trying over these last three weeks to just kind of I don't know. It just feels like everything slapped all right into my forehead. One, two, three, like grandpa dying and mom. And then I'm leaving my partner down in Arizona so he can do, you know, whatever kind of traveling he wants to do. It's just a a lot to take at one time, but it's been nice to have photography to focus on in this little critter. Um, Where did you guys go, like, on your trip? Oh, we... We went, can you please move? <laughs> he's so cute, though. <laughs> mm. And he's just like a little rag doll. Like, he'll let you do whatever you want to him, <laughs> so long as you love him. Um, so we had gone through northeastern California, kind of super rural and very red and very, I'm not wearing a mask. You know, lots of folks like that, which was... A little unsettling coming from, I mean, it's very, like, it's locked down here in the Northwest. You can't really do anything. So it's interesting to see just the different parts of our country at this moment through uh, Northern California. And then we went through, um, kind of skirted the Sierras along Mammoth and then Las Vegas and the Hoover Dam, which is cool. And then we spent a lot of time in Arizona, which is where my family was, um, or my, at least my grandparents were for a little bit. Um, and we were, we were racing in front of this cold front the whole time that went a couple of weeks ago that brought snow all over California. Uh, it snowed in Death Valley and everything. It was, it was a very chilly trip. And then the day after I left, my partner, and he was like, yeah, degrees here. <laughs> like, oh, cool. <laughs> Great. Um, do you have, what was the number one uh, favorite place that you guys visited on your trip? Oh, I really liked Death Valley, which was, it was cool because uh, I hate to gush about them, but we're driving through Death Valley and we come across this bus that's all broken down and it says the uh, need mechanic in the window and I said well you're a mechanic we ended up staying there for three hours 
helping them. And it was, it was just, I don't know, that was probably my favorite Death Valley scene, all that there was to see there. That was like the one time we got up for a sunrise. <laughs> you guys were, um, you were like camping out of his truck, right? So like overlanding yes. kind of. <laughs> After this experience, it's would you do it again? Oh yeah, like I am just thinking about how to get a litter box and some dog beds onto a bus, and then I don't, <laughs> I don't know how long I'm gonna stay here because that was a lot of fun. I mean, I like to camp. We've been camping in the same spot uh, with my family since I was like three years old. One of my favorite things to do. Um, so it was really nice to do that with somebody that you like, love, and care about too. Um, okay, so before you go, hold on, my dogs are barking, so that's why I wanted to stop too. Calm down. Okay. You cannot go outside, Mamo. <laughs> You're grounded. Okay, before we go, Kim, do you have anything to ask before we close out? Well, I want to ask what your 2021 goals are for the year. Okay, 2021 goals. I got a couple of weddings coming up, which I'm super jazzed about. So I need to go get some more equipment to make myself a little bit more professional. I'm looking forward to that. Um, hmm. I just, what I was trying to do last year, see, I came out here and now it's too cold. Hmm. What I was trying to do last year was shoot, um, you know, one thing in January, two things in February, three things in March, like that. And it really worked out pretty well. So I think um, my goal for this year is just to be better at hey. through these periods where I'll have a lot going on and then I'll cut out for a little bit and drift off and do some useless things. So I want to just really stay focused this year. And I am super looking forward to the next calendar. What about you guys? <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> this is it. Trying to get this, this off the ground. What are What are your goals for 2021? <laughs> I didn't hear. Oh, we were just saying um, to get this, our whole studio and stuff off the ground. That's one of our goals for sure. But Yeah, that's going to be so rad. Thank <laughs> you for including me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, we want to, we'll definitely want to include you again in the future. But for yeah. those of you that don't, or for the people out there that don't know where to find you, where can people find you on social media? Well, I suppose on yeah. Facebook, you can look up Echo Fox Photography. And Echo Fox is one word because that's my big dog's name. Um. Same on Instagram at Echo Fox Photography or Mon Little Fox. And that's about all I dabble in. It's just Facebook and Instagram because who has the time for anything else, honestly? <laughs> that's like literally like how I feel. <laughs> like what what other ones matter? Yeah. And there's always a new one to learn every month anyway. So I'm just going to stick with the two that have been around the longest. Uh, but yeah the the echo fox photography on facebook is probably the most active one and that's where i do all my scheduling and stuff too so if you want to get a hold of me and you live in the columbia gorge area you can do it that way get monica to take your pictures for you <laughs> yes any kind of picture maternity newborn event all of them <laughs> <laughs> all the pictures monica's your girl yeah, I also got to take pictures for a butcher this last year, which is way cool. Like, it was very gruesome, but it was awesome. <laughs> it's an so experience for sure. Pictures you need taken? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. That was... We'll scratch that. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, everyone go... Go on Instagram and Facebook and check Monica out. Um, check her out if you're again in the Columbia Gorge area. There she is. If she's in, if you guys are in the Columbia Gorge area, 
please, if and you need pictures, go ahead and get Monica to take your pictures for you. She's really good. Yeah. I can talk from experience, which will be a separate thing, a video that I'll talk about, that she is a really good photographer. And she also has fun, and she loves what she does. So, so much definitely, <laughs> definitely a photographer to have if you're looking for pictures to be taken. Um, and that being thank said, you very much. <laughs> thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time on the next podcast. And... Bye.